In this short tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the SQL Server Management Studio Designer to start creating entities in my database. Before you start building out your database, we're going to want to make sure that we have an entity relationship database diagram to utilize to follow along with when we're building out our database structures. Previously, I showed a video on using draw.io as a tool. Many of you might be familiar or have heard about tools like Smart Draw, Visio, or Lucid Charts. Uh, but I like to demonstrate with draw.io because it's a web browser tool allowing us to create diagrams like entity relationship diagrams. And here, is one I previously created for a college system that I'm going to build out in SQL Server Management Studio. Uh, in this video, I'm only going to build out one of the structures uh, because in subsequent videos, I'm going to actually create SQL DDL scripts or data definition scripts with the create table statements and the alter table statements to finish out the database. Uh, but in this one, I just want to demonstrate that we can use the designer as one option to build out our database tables. And to do that, we right click on tables and under our database that we want to create our objects in and we choose new table. And when we do that, you'll see the database designer will come up for our for our tables. And here we'll plug in our column names and our data types. And as we put them in, we're going to set column properties down below here accordingly. And here with students um, is the first table I'm going to create based upon the diagram I just showed you. I'm going to always start out with my primary key, my unique identifier for the table that all tables should have. Um, I'm going to put in student ID and I'm going to choose a data type here from the drop down of an uh, integer in this case. And down below, what I wanted this number for my primary key to do is to be an identity column. And what that'll be, it will automatically fill in and increment each time a record gets put into the table. Um, in identity increment says increment by one each time. Seed is our starting point. Sometimes I like to start with like a bigger number. So let's start with 100. That means it just will start with the number 100. So the first record goes in will be 100, second will be 102, etc. Uh, the next thing that I'm also going to do here uh, with my table is I'm going to want to make sure that I set this as the primary key. And one way to do that here in the designer is to right click right to the left of the column name and do set primary key. And then you'll see the little key lock there. Another way is up here on the toolbar, you'll see it changes over to remove primary key now uh, to undo it and I can undo it or I can set it back. So there's two ways. And as you know, there's many ways to do different capabilities in the programs. Uh, I'm gonna finish this table out real quick. First name, I'm gonna put in as a var char and I'm gonna set it as a field size of 30, something realistic for first names. Varchar means that they're going to all be different sizes, so nothing's going to be fixed, up to 30 characters. Last name, again, picking something realistic. Uh, 30 should be safe, but you could do some research to see. I'm unchecking allow null because I expect everybody to have a first name and last name. Address, same thing. Um, I'm going to do 100 for the street address. City. State. state, I will use char of two because every state abbreviation is going to be fixed of two. Uh, zip code, in this case, I'm going to use uh, a, a char of five. If we're doing non-US postal codes, we'd change it to something different. If we wanted to do the zip plus four, we would change it to something different. Uh, you also might wonder why I'm using char over 
integer is because there are zip codes that start with leading zeros on the east coast uh, and therefore if you use an uh, integer you can't start a number with a leading zero uh, and then what we're going to do here is basically save this and by clicking to save and we'll give it a table name and i'm going to call this here tbl students and hit ok and then i can close this out and if I was to over here um, refresh or expand and my other categories you'll see by right clicking refresh you'll see that now my table of students is there and I can expand it and see my columns you'll see the primary key and then you can see each of the fields that I put into uh, this entity uh, that's one of the entities for this entire database. We're going to create the rest of them by demonstrating how to do it with SQL scripts in future videos. I hope you found this useful and if you have any questions or comments please uh, feel free to place them below. I hope you choose to subscribe uh, and you, you can also always reach out to me at professorwolf.com. Thank you.